and I think differently about distribution because I've never been the one who's been handed, you know, a million subscribers on a golden spoon, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is where a lot of people start out is they're like, yeah, I wanna start a podcast or a YouTube channel, or I wanna start, I wanna be the next Gary Vee, or you know, whoever, insert whoever, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. the, the name. Um, but it's really hard to build an audience. Like it really is. Like you have to work your oh, yeah. tail off. Yep. And, and so it's not that I don't wanna work my tail off, but I look at, all right, if I wanna build an audience, who already has my audience that I can tap into, that I can add value to in some way? And you know, going back 10, 11, 12 years ago, that was blogging. And so if you guys remember like the, the golden era of blogging, it oh, was yeah. like you guest blogged on someone else's site. This is an intro. Intro, intro, intro. Hustle and flow chart with your boy, my boy, Matt Wolf, Joe Fit. Hey, we're back. Yeah. My this favorite is, place. Yeah, the internet. Living in other people's ears. <laughs> Living is in that other weird? people's ears? Yes. It's a little <laughs> creepy that your favorite place is is y this person's ears that is listening to us right now. Well, well, this one's not my favorite place because this one's actually a little dirty. They yeah, need to Q-tip up. Take yeah, a shower. <laughs> got a little, a little too much earwax in there. Let's, let's get that out. Yeah, come on. You can't <laughs> hear our velvety... <laughs> 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 All right, now now they can hear our velvety voices. Mm. <laughs> I'm Get sorry for anybody listening with headphones right now. <laughs> we're trying no, to we're blow not. the earwax out. <laughs> well, they probably needed to clean their ears. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim, your ears are really dirty. <laughs> uh, Brian, Jesus, Jim. Brian, I know it's listening. Powers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're actually called out first and last names now. Jeez. No, no, he knows I like him. <laughs> he might yeah, need well, to check his ears, though. <laughs> Well, we're talking to one of his good buddies today, I so know. it's all good. It's and all good. yeah, Steve Dale, I think you got to check your ears too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just calling out all the boys. All right. Um, so yeah, Greg Roulette is is the guy we're chatting with today. And uh, the reason I called out those two guys is because they work with Greg. So you know, I'm sure they're <laughs> listening to this and laughing, I hope. Um, don't yeah. hate us. Dude, this episode was like the energy of Greg is always amazing. Like you cannot be mm -hmm. around Greg and not have a huge smile on your face and have like energy like Greg just brings it. Dude, we could attest to that because when we met him at uh, Rich Sheffern's event back in February of this year, we had dinner with him and Rob Cosper, Rob Cosper, who's been on the show. Yeah. We had a steak dinner. It was just the four of us. It was just like really freaking nice place. And we walked like a mile or two to get there, I think, <laughs> like in, this yeah. in Delray, Florida. And uh, and Greg was freaking like on it. And he's been up for 48 hours freaking documenting yeah. this whole thing. Like documenting. I think you it, just made a new. Verb. It's a new word. Yeah. Greg, you yeah. can take it. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like the dude looked fresher than we did. And we had sleep. We had I mean, this was like a 24 hour live stream plus all this other stuff. He was up for 48 freaking hours or so. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was high crazy. energy. So, but so on this episode, we do cover a lot of ground with him. It's a really, really cool episode. But so we did a mastermind when we were in uh, Orlando for Podfest, and we asked Greg to come speak at this mastermind. And what he talked about at the mastermind blew everybody's mind in the room. Like <laughs> to this day, everybody like that was in that mastermind comes to us and goes, "Dude, what Greg said was freaking phenomenal." And he was basically explaining how he got a partnership deal with like Entrepreneur.com and got like his his uh, reality show on Amazon uh, streaming, Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. And so we asked him to come back on the show and, and sort of reiterate what he taught in this mastermind about how to how to make these deals with companies like Entrepreneur and Amazon.com and get a show that's like on a very high profile platform. And he literally broke it down like he's giving oh, yeah. away resources that I don't think he wanted to share with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of those uh, we actually we we literally and we did this, but he was like, should we just censor this out? And he was like, nah, we're, we're going to put it out there, but uh, we probably won't put them on the show notes. So yeah. you have to get the notes. <laughs> yeah. And that is a bribe, of course, to get the notes, but uh, yeah. it'll be worth it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but and uh, then, um, you know, one of the one of the interesting things we were talking to about Greg is, um, you know, as we're filming this, Joe and I are in, uh, and Greg, we were all in separate locations due to the whole COVID thing that's going mm -hmm. on right now. And Greg's business had a had to take a little bit mm -hmm. of a hit because he it, he did a lot Huge of in person. Hit. The okay, he took a massive hit. Died. <laughs> yeah, he took a six figure hit is what he told us. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Just you know, so hit. he had to reinvent <laughs> some stuff and he basically reinvented his business in the last 30 days and created a brand new six figure business. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and so we get into that, that as well. Yeah. 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 So let's just, uh, let's leave it there. Greg is absolutely amazing. Um, 
yeah, it feels like we've known him forever. Like we yeah. just have this kind of like flow, and I don't know, just. It's a good people. It's a sign of good people. So uh, yes. you're going to love Greg. Get the notes. Let's start there uh, because yep. I mentioned them. So notes, I mean the companions to this episode. Mm-hmm. You have two weeks by the time this thing goes live. Don't wait longer or you are not going to get them for free, at least. Yeah. You can get them in the membership. Uh, there's a way to get that. We're not going to talk about that now. Just get the notes. Hustle, Hustle and flow flow chart. chart. Dot dot com slash, slash your mom. Comp. I mean, comp. C O M P. That's <laughs> that's actually see. sort of difficult to do when we're not in the same location. <laughs> Especially when I say your mom instead of comp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't go to hustleandflowchart.com slash your mom. Go to hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. <laughs> Should I make that redirect to slash comp now that we said it? <laughs> no. It. Well, yes, but with a picture of our moms. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why not? Who knows? Let's make them famous. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> my mom so, listens. I don't know about yo mom. Right. My mom was on our live stream. She was commenting during our live stream. Not good enough, Trish. All right. Uh, so go to hustleandflowchart.com slash comp or three. It, dial in your old rotary phone. <clears throat> doesn't work on a rotary phone. Damn no time to do right. that. Can't text on a rotary. Okay. No. Get your phone out and text the phone number 38470. You got it. 38470. <laughs> I was using my mental memory, closing my eyes. Uh, mm. Text the word comp, C O M P, to 38470. You also get the notes that way, the show notes. Not the show yeah. notes, the companions. You, <laughs> you're going to want the companion because there's going to there's some stuff that we're putting exclusively in the companions for this one, and you'll hear it in the show. So we haven't mentioned this actually in a while. I know it's another CTA, but hop in our freaking Facebook group. It's absolutely free. Guys mm-hmm. like Greg are in there. So you can mm-hmm. actually chat with him. It's at flowchartgroup.com. Flowchartgroup.com. Go there. Yes. There are literally like well over 2,000 people in there now. But like I think last week we added close to 50 freaking people. Are like, Dude, and we're doing live streams every week right now. And we're doing we're so bringing cool. on interviews and doing interviews live to the group. We're sharing resources. I shared like a content calendar yep. for members a couple weeks ago. Breathing exercises with yeah. instructors. I mean, like flowchartgroup.com it's free there's nothing no strings no nothing it's literally a way to connect with us and our guests and everyone else and people are just having a good time and we share a bunch of cool stuff there too yep and then a final call to action yes (laughs) go check out our sponsor um (laughs) hrefs.com is a seo tool that we love we use it ourselves like i say in every episode we used it long 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 before they were a sponsor and uh, we're still using it to this day as a sponsor, and we still actually pay the monthly fee. They, mm-hmm. you know, they don't give it to us for free because we're a sponsor. True that. Um, but we love it enough to continue paying for it anyway. Funny <laughs> trefs, come on. <laughs> so so um, uh, go to ahrefs dot com, and there is a seven day trial for seven dollars. And uh, what I actually like, I know Matt's in there actually a lot more than me, but I just love how uh, you could set up these kind of like. Um, like you can basically save your website and you have like these alerts and like mm-hmm. just for a dumb dumb like me, I can click into there without. I mean, I actually really do like Ahrefs. It's mm-hmm. not that difficult to use, but I'm just saying it for a dumb dumb like me. I can just at a glance almost have like a dashboard of the health of my website of how it's looking on the interwebs with well, you can set up a like, weekly email we, we set up these e- e- weekly email alerts inside of our inside of Done. hrefs where every week it's like here's what uh, keywords you moved up in rank for here's what keywords you moved down in rank for Perfect. and all you got if you really want it to keep it as simple as possible you just check those emails every week and then if you see a keyword you move down on you go into hrefs look at you know mm. try to figure out what happened and figure out some new ways to push that keyword back up the rankings thank you mr matt i'm going to stop logging in hrefs now it's one less thing i got to do but <laughs> i'll still get the info i need so um go go there it's cool they have a lot of education seven dollars for seven days of a trial you get just experience the dang thing it's a h r e f s dot com hrefs all right yes. let's go over to mr gregory roulette greg my favorite ninja how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. I, I've, I've literally been looking forward to this. Like I've been waiting, like counting down the last like 10 minutes, like nine minutes, till we go, eight minutes. Till, like I'm super stoked, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah, it, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. And I feel like we go back really far, even though maybe we do in a different lifetime or something. But like <laughs> it's only been since February of this year. Uh, yeah. Meeting out there at Rich Sheffern's event. And you were the guy that was, uh, you know, quietly in the corner, like running around for 24 plus hours. Actually, it was like 48 hours, I think, for you. Yeah. Huh? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was a because we did the mastermind the whole day, and yep. then we did yep. 24 hours, and then I drove from Orlando to Del Rey, so attack on three hours there. It was a, it, but it was a heck of a lot of fun, but it was a lot of work, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was just something we're like, all right, uh, Greg, we got to get to know you. I think you said the same thing to us, and then from there, yeah, yeah we had dinner turn into what we you went to our mastermind over there in a uh, pod fest in Orlando uh, back in March, right before all this craziness lockdown stuff happened. And then you blew us away in the mastermind. We're like, holy crap. And I think everyone in that room, the 20 people or whatever it was, uh, I knew you partnered with some of them now uh, mm -hmm. and, and you just opened their minds to all these like lateral ways of thinking. I think that's what we're going to dig into here. Yeah, I love that. And first, just I want to say thank you guys for putting that room together. I mean, just incredible people who have all kind of come together around, I guess, the concept of like podcasting and growing their brand and influence through that. But I mean, there was just incredible people in the room. And as you said, we partnered with one. We created a, a really cool resource for parents as they went through this homeschooling. And the, mm -hmm. like within like days, like we had created a resource, built a landing page, built a website together. Really, yeah. really cool. And just but just the, it just speaks to the quality of your listeners and the people in your community. So thank you guys for doing that. Appreciate you, yeah. man. Yeah. No, I was blown. Yeah. I was blown away when uh, Brian Powers. I was give him a shout out. Uh, yeah, he, he he was like, dude, you connect me with Greg. This is so cool. And then he showed me the planner. I'm like, how the hell did you guys release that so fast? And it's like beautiful. <laughs> and it's uh, yeah. So parent, I mean, we'll link it up. You know, we'll get the link from you. We'll throw it in the show notes uh, of this episode. So. Greg, I mean, where do we go? For, I, I kind of want to hear the story because you do a lot. Yeah. I, I mentioned Ninja. You do a lot of American Ninja, Warrior, whatever. I don't even watch the show. Matt does. I do. My, kid, my, my kids love impressed. it. I love it. Yeah. All right, that, that's like one of our family sit down. Like when it's on, we like the whole family sits down and watches American Ninja Warrior together because the kids love it just as much as I do. So really quick, yeah, like so, you have that in your so backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we built one in the backyard. So I um I, I've I've always been like a fitness guy and I, I did CrossFit for like four or five years, got out of it for you know whatever reasons, and then I was looking for something else to do. And I didn't want to just go to a gym, right? You don't want to just go to LA fitness. Like right. nothing wrong with that, but it's not I, you know, I wanted something to challenge. And I, I I saw a Groupon of all things for this place called Ninja Fit. And I was like, mm. oh my God, this is it was so it was like CrossFit mixed with like Spartan race kind of yeah. stuff, oh, mixed with Ninja fun. Warrior. And I was like, oh my God. Like, like, this is amazing. And I went uh, to like whatever the class they give you with the Groupon and like I gave him my credit card on the day. I'm like, I'm, I'm coming back here and I've been going there for three years and just incredible. Again, it's just always testing yourself with with fitness. And then as my kids started getting older, they started seeing the show and they want to try crazy stuff, right? They're doing the mm -hmm. monkey bars to, you know, doing liches and, and just it is an amazing way to bond with your kids and teach them skills. And, you know, if you fall, get back up again and teaching them all kinds of technique. And it, it has been and it has been so much fun. And, and my quick little cliff note story there is I, I got invited uh, two seasons ago down in Miami to go be a, a tester for the show. So what that means is the day before they do the taping, they invite a bunch of people that they kind of know in the community to test all the obstacles to see if they're like the right height or the right length. So like you're doing all the obstacles at like pretty much like they're like, good luck. Right. And so, uh, you know, they're like, oh, wait, that was too far after you like face plant and like kill yourself. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So I remember I did like the one of the broken stair ones, you know, one of the balance mm -hmm. ones. And I took like two steps and it was like so far apart and I ate it and I flipped over and I still have a scar like Wolverine slashed oh, no. me like across my my torso um, from doing it. But, I, I, you know, just it was really, really cool to be on the course. But it's fun, man. I know it's a yeah. no marketing segue at all, but it's still cool. Like it's, what, it's what us marketers do on, on the side, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you watch it on TV and they make it look so easy. Like, you know, you see all the, the actual athletes that get approved to be on the show and they go through those balance obstacles and they're just like one foot at a time, like leaping across it. And then you go see it in, in person. You're like, that actually is a lot harder than it, they make it look on TV. And it's also just larger than life. I was testing one obstacle, like uh, you fly from like one of these spinning circle things to another spinning circle thing. And you're probably 70, 80 feet in like the air, sense. you know, yeah. and and you're holding it and then there's water below you and then there's like the ground and you're like, oh, my God, like this, is, you know, <laughs> I hope I land there. Maybe I hope I <laughs> yeah. just make it into the water and yeah. don't miss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, I just thought that was cool. And uh, next time we're in Orlando, I know we didn't make it happen last time, but we're running that course at your house <laughs> or <Definitely>. wherever. Ninja <laughs> no, shout out. Uh, but you let's talk about your story about yeah. the, the just interesting things. I don't even know where to start. I don't know where it starts. I know it involves Emmy award winning producing and uh, reality shows with Amazon and 
new businesses in the last 30 days. So take a yeah, step. It's wild. Yeah. What, what were you the, doing the, before you were an entrepreneur? And then like, you know, how did you transition? Let's just kind of like go through the yeah. story and we're going to, we're going to pick, pick at stuff that we find go super fascinating. Yeah. So the, the cliff note version, when I was 18, uh, in my senior year of high school, they let me do a senior project to get out of school at noon. And like, of course you'll do anything <laughs> to get out of school at noon. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I started a business and I started a record label and this was uh 2001. So it was right in the era of like no limit records and cash money yeah. and like Rockefeller. It was like the era of where like, I like to say, like it was all these hip hop moguls were the cool entrepreneurs before all the cool entre- like the Zuckerbergs and the jobs is and the Bezos. Like yeah. it was like you wanted to be Jay-Z or Baby from Cash Money or Master P. And I was well, like, that's when uh, Dr. Dre's 2001 came out, right? In exactly. And so you had like Death Row Records so, and so, Shazam, <laughs> West Coast, throw it down, yeah. you know? Okay. Um, and, uh, and so I was like, dude, like that's the business model I want. And so Master P was like the guy who's yeah. like empire I saw. I was just like, mm-hmm. all right, there's Master P. He's got his two brothers on his record label, you know, C Murda and Silk to Shaka. <laughs> and then he had like, and then he basically just hired everyone, you know, on his block. He's like, you have an album and you have an album and you have an album, like the Oprah <laughs> style yeah man. and i was like this could be awesome like what if i start a record label and i just sign all my buddies from the football team and uh so my senior year of high school i worked at a mexican restaurant took all the money that i made from tips and went and you know found a a, a recording studio i mean this is again 2001 so like there wasn't pro tools and like the cool mm, stuff that no. we have now went to a recording studio spent all my money got an album out and we sold a thousand copies my my senior year of high school and i was like all right cool uh spent the next you know 10 years touring the country uh had a recording studio that paid for college i've had everyone in my my, like in my dorm room at UCF, everyone from Whoa. Bone Thugs and Harmony to JT Money to Trick Daddy to, you know, you name it, you know, <laughs> rappers were, that's how I paid for college. And, um, got out of that, I found this guy, surfer dude, uh, who was selling this course that would teach me how to mass control people. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, I wonder, ah, who, this I, I wonder who this mysterious <laughs> figure is. And, yeah. uh, you know, to me, it was a, a absurd that you were going to spend $2,000 on some videos mm-hmm. that were going to make you rich, right? right. Uh, I know. And I'm, you know, he's a great guy and I love him. I've probably spent more money with him than, than anyone. Sure. Uh, good old Frank Kern. And, but I bought the course and I was immediately like, all right, I'm going to be the, the music industry's Frank Kern. And I created my first info product. It was called the new music economy. And it was teaching musicians. Again, this is like probably 2004, 2005 ish, like really early, um, Mm -hmm. how to do all the stuff that we do now, which is as a musician, instead of we don't give away like free reports, we give away free songs, but we Mm -hmm. can build an email list. And then when we get them on an email list, we can sell them t-shirts and buttons and hats and pins and hoodies. And, you know, so I taught musicians how to create a real business and sold, you know, thousands of those courses to musicians all over the world. And, you know, that was, that was kind of the the, the kickoff point. Um, um, that's funny. Joe now. and I probably could have been clients of yours because back around that <laughs> same that era, era, Joe and I, yeah. Joe and <laughs> I were awesome. both in bands. I mean, we weren't <laughs> in the hip hop side. We were more the like pop punk emo side. But right. which is <laughs> a great place to be during that era. Like that was the cool place to be, man. You know, yeah. you know, I probably seen Fall Out Boy more than anyone other than Snoop Dogg. Yeah, uh, buddy. From the concert side. <laughs> Actually, my, my one of my fir- my first band ever. Little uh, little known fact: my first band ever was called Fall Out Boy. And then uh, it was actually before existed Fallout before Boy, right? Fallout yeah. Boy, and then that Fallout Boy got big, and so we we changed our name because we're like, yeah, we'll never catch up to them. <laughs> oh, Don't need to mess with that trained bark infringement or <laughs> no whatever. Way. No, um, yeah. So and then leverage that. Uh, I met my 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 current business partner Nick Nanton, who said, hey, all that stuff that you're teaching for musicians. Um, I got a bunch of business owners, like lawyers and doctors and financial advisors who we help to publish books and we help them become celebrities in their market. Can you teach them all this internet stuff um, and how to create court? And like, uh, and he's like, they pay more than $27, which is like what I was selling my course for. And I was like, wow, this sounds fantastic. So the same thing that I'm charging $27 for, I can charge $2,700 for. Yeah. And, you know, and so we partnered up uh, 11 years ago now, 10, 10, 11 years ago now. And, uh, We've been all over the world helping people to create TV shows and write books and, uh, you know, get in the media and use media to grow their business. And as you said, uh, we've parlayed that into a film and TV company where we get to do documentaries and docu-series. Uh, we've done documentaries on everyone from Jack Canfield to Brian Tracy to Peter Diamandis to Jay Abraham to Joe Polish to Dan Sullivan to mm-hmm. nonprofits. Uh, if anybody's been at Funnel Hacking Live the last three years, we've done the documentary that they've premiered there on uh, Operation Underground Railroad on the human trafficking and uh, mm-hmm. side. And then we just did the big one uh, on click funnels, uh, that they just debuted. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so we get to do really, really cool projects. One of them in the Dominican Republic, uh, we did a, a documentary on an organization called Esperanza. It was founded by a former major league baseball player. His name was Dave Volley. He's now, uh, on MLB network and he's the color commentator for, okay. uh, the Mariners. And, uh, 
you know, he started an organization called Esperanza because he was at a base, uh, you know, spring training or getting ready for the season down in the Dominican. And he thought these little kids wanted his autograph because, I mean, that's what you think, right? When you're 19 years old, you're playing in the Dominican, you're an MLB player. Uh, yeah. They wanted food because they didn't have any food to eat that night. And he went to go, you know, buy him some chickens and, and things like that. And, you know, his, his wife turned to him and he goes, you know, you didn't really help them. Hmm. You give them food tonight, but you know they need food again tomorrow. And so he went back down there and made a promise to go back down there and help businesses. And so he does uh, micro loans for women owned businesses in the Dominican uh, because the men, you know, like guys like us. And when as soon as we get money, we go buy gold chains and beepers and cell phones and like, <laughs> that's, that's you know, some Yeezys. Right yeah. That's yeah. worldwide. <laughs> uh, but, the, <laughs> but the women, they go and they they support their children and they do education and they get them, you know, and just all the good stuff. And so uh, he started his organization to help women own entrepreneurs with micro loans, hundred dollar loans, two hundred dollar loans. Mm -hmm. Now they've done something like fifty million loan, fifty million dollars worth of loans. Wow. We're talking like a ninety nine percent repayment rate, and now it's generational. So like you know the the daughter has now become the grandmother, and their kids have started business. I mean it's just incredible. Wow. Uh, we um, I was fortunate enough to win an Emmy award as a producer on on that film. You know telling uh, the story of some of the women. So um, that was Cliff Note version from rapper the and rock band to. One uh, more uh, uh, yeah, return, return to Esperanza. Uh, and that's available on Amazon Prime, so they can check that out there. Cool. Uh, or I think it's a uh, return to Esperanza. They can just Google it and uh, they can find the trailer and all that good stuff. That's so right. were, were you a rapper yourself or were you just like representing other rappers? Oh, no, I was the rapper. Um, you oh, okay. obviously when you have a record label, you sign yourself as the first artist. Yeah. Like, that's the whole deal, right? Like, the thing, right? So then my next question is, like, <laughs> is this music still available out there online somewhere? <laughs> so you guys have a big podcast with like a yeah. big reach. So this is like this is very uh, this is very emotional. But uh, yeah, like so <laughs> on iTunes, uh, I have two albums that are still on iTunes. One uh, is under Giro, uh, obviously for Greg Roulette. But that was my gangster name, uh, Giro. <laughs> um, and that that uh, that has some of my best like solo material out there. And then uh, later on, I really that I wasn't going to be the great white Eminem, uh, the next one. So uh, we, I got a, uh, I saw Jay Z do Unplugged, one of my mm -hmm. favorite like specials ever. He had the Roots playing behind him, and it was oh. so I was like, I need to go find me the Roots. And so I found a band, and uh, we we had, that was kind of the five years of touring was with these guys, uh, and the band's called Stump S T U M P P. Uh, we 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 found that name because I love the, how people find names of things. Yeah. Uh, I was during hurricane season. There were three hurricanes that hit Orlando within two months, uh, like just back to back. We got crushed and so on every street corner were like yard signs that said stump grinding um, because everyone's trees had blown yep. over from the hurricanes uh, and so we did a lot of uh, recreational materials and uh, adult beverages at the time uh, <laughs> and we thought it was just hilarious to name our band stump based on the stump grinding <laughs> company so that's a, I love that's it. Do, you have, do you have like a good like line, like uh, a lick from one of your hits or whatever that you just like give us like, I don't know, like <laughs> are you going to make him rap <laughs> on the podcast? Yeah, why not? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we'll do the freestyle bout. They'll have to come to your mastermind. How about okay. that? They, they come go. to the mastermind next year. We, uh, I'll buy everybody a shot of tequila and we'll have a, we'll have a session. <laughs> You'll buy everybody a shot of tequila, take three yourself and then, yeah, and, and then we're good to go. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Right, we'll do that now, next year. 20, now these, these documentaries, the, uh, like the Joe Polish, the Brian Tracy, the Jay Abraham, like all yeah. these ones, where can people go to, to check those out? Yeah, majority of them you can find on Amazon Prime. So we've had a, a really good relationship with Amazon Prime uh, for the last three years now. Uh, the first movie that or the first part that we put on there was actually a reality show that I did called Ambitious Adventures, um, yeah. which I think we'll talk about in just a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, but we signed a deal with them for that show. And then we created a great relationship with them. And, uh, you know, so we we get distribution through them. So Amazon Prime, uh, the, the biggest, most commercial success that we've had on Amazon Prime has been the documentary we did on Rudy. Uh, if you guys remember the football movie, yeah. Rudy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we told his story so the story of how he got the movie made and how his life changed afterwards um, and so if they just search for Rudy they'll find that documentary and then uh, last year last March um, we took Rudy to Broadway and we held a one night show one night wow. one man show on Broadway sold out a Broadway theater the Samuel J Friedman theater uh, and that is also on Amazon Prime the recording of his Broadway one man show so wow. um, it's called the walk on uh, is is the Broadway show but all that's the most of our stuff can be seen on Amazon yeah love it well, let's cool. let's talk about how you hacked your way onto Amazon, you know, in this yeah. like roundabout way, because when you said this to the mastermind group in Orlando at PodFest this year, I think everyone in the room just like fell silent. We're like, wait, huh? Huh? How'd that happen? Oh, yeah. Everybody <laughs> like, in that mastermind afterwards is, is probably made some reference to what you talked about to us since that awesome. mastermind. Like it, it was really impactful for people. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think about distribution. I, I think the, this whole conversation is around distribution. Right. And right. Mm -hmm. and I think differently about distribution because 
I've never been the one who's been handed, you know, a million subscribers on a golden spoon, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is where a lot of people start out is they're like, yeah, I want to start a podcast or a YouTube channel, or I want to start, I want to be the next Gary Vee or, you know, whoever, insert whoever, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. the, the name, um, but it's really hard to build an audience. Like it really is. Like you have to work your oh, yeah. tail off. Yep. And, and so it's not that I don't want to work my tail off, but I look at, all right, if I want to build an audience who already has my audience that I can tap into, that I can add value to in some way. And, you know, going back 10, 11, 12 years ago, that was blogging. And so if you guys remember like the, the golden era of blogging, it oh, was yeah. like you guest blogged on someone else's site. So you would yep. write a guest post on Tim Ferriss's site, or you would write a mm -hmm. guest blog on Huffington Post or, right. you know, wherever. Right. And so when I was doing my music business, there was a ton of uh, like industry people. Uh, I remember one was Elitist uh, and another one was uh, Hypebot, which was run by the number one a touring booking agent uh, in the world. And I was like, hey, uh, his name was Bruce. And I was like, hey, Bruce, can you write about booking and all that stuff? Can I write about ways that they can make more money after they book the show? And he was like, oh my God, that would be amazing. Like how to build your mailing list and how to sell yep. more merchandise. And, and so I started writing for him. And at the end of all of the blogs, you would say, hey, this article was written by Greg Roulette. Uh, you can learn more about him at Gen Y Rockstars and get his free guide, the hundred social media resources for musicians, like whatever it was. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that 10, 11, 12 years ago. And now I look at it the exact same way is who has as an audience that I can add value to that will send me traffic, but they get a benefit from it. So it has to be mutual. Um, mm -hmm. and again, this is nothing new. It's, it's, it's something that it's talked about a lot. And so I, I started looking at, all right, if I want to go and reach entrepreneurs who has lots of entrepreneurs, entrepreneur.com, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I approached them and I wrote a cold, you know, cold email to them. And then I happened to meet one at a, uh, meet one of their uh, publishers at a conference. And I was just like, hey, I see that you guys are starting to get into video. You know, how do you create your, I just started asking them questions. Like, how do you get your, and their biggest problem was we need a ton of video for our website, but we don't have enough resources internally to create all of that video. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I, I, um, I can make you some like, and just get, you know, I could just like make you like, what do you guys need? Like, what are the key? And, and so they laid it out to me on a silver platter. And I said, all right, well, I, you know, I have an Emmy award winning crew and this and that uh, we can just make all that stuff for you. And so we entered into this relationship where we sent them four to five videos every single month. They put it on the homepage. Um, <laughs> they put it on their social media. They put it on. So this, the first step in all of this is who has my audience and how can I find a way to infiltrate that audience in a good way where I'm almost giving them more than they're ever going to give me in return? Mm. Now, obviously, with entrepreneur, I could say as seen on entrepreneur.com. I can say, you know, I could interview my buddies and I'd be like, hey, Joe, Matt, like I got this show on entrepreneur. Do you guys want to be on it? Now I have leverage yep. because mm -hmm. someone who just creates their first podcast and you try to go, hey, Grant Cardone or Rich Sheffrin or whoever, do you want to be on my podcast? They're like, who the heck are you? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> but you say, hey, I have a show. It's distributed by entrepreneur everyone says yes, mm -hmm. right? Because they want, they, they see audience already being built there. So that was kind of the, the, the first real big aha. And then we started looking at, well, who are other bigger players? So everyone looks at the obvious places, but what are the non-obvious places? And this is a lot of what I talked about at, at your mastermind was, all right, if I want to attract, uh, and one of my big markets is financial advisors. Well, you know, there's obvious places. Everyone's trying to advertise on Facebook and just typing in financial advisor as a keyword. And I was like, what if I just went to the Financial Planning Association? Mm -hmm. So anyone who pays their dues and is a due paying member, like that's probably a quality person because they pay for continuing education. Yep. I sell education things. And so I just went to them and I was like, hey, like, how can I write content for you? Or how can I film video for you? And they were like, well, we don't do video, but we'll take your articles. You can write for our blog. I started writing for the blog and I say, hey, I noticed you have a magazine. Can I also write for the magazine? <laughs> hey, I noticed you have social media. Can I take over your Instagram for a week? Can I take over your, can we do a Facebook Live together? And what we tend to forget is that it's not just the website or the magazine. It's all the other media properties. Like, you know, for you guys, like you guys have an amazing podcast, but you also have, you know, a membership site. You also have a newsletter that you send out to thousands mm -hmm. of people. You have mm -hmm. Facebook groups. Like, so if someone could tap into that and say, Hey, you know what? You know, I love being a podcast guest, but you know, how can I also put an insert into your newsletter and how can I also, but the key to it is making it so easy. So for me to go, all right, Joe, Matt, what if I paid for the insert? 
Mm-hmm. What if I designed the insert? You could approve it, obviously, because, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. what if I paid for that and inserted it? Well, now you guys went from, you know, that's kind of a cool idea to, well, he's going to pay for it yeah. and he's going to put an affiliate link in it. So if anybody purchases, like now it becomes much easier for you to say yes. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people expect the other person to do the work for them. Right. And you guys see this from an affiliate side. Yep. The best mm-hmm. affiliates give you the banners and give you the videos, give you the swipe copy. You might want to change it to make it yours and in your voice but the easier you make it for people. So like for the Financial Planning Association, I write the article, I write it in WordPress so that I can just give them the HTML code. So they literally just have to copy and paste it. They don't have to upload images. They don't have to do anything. I put the bylines in there. I find the pictures for them. Uh, I write the Facebook post so they can just copy and paste and put it into Hootsuite or whatever they use. Like I make it so easy for them. When we did the entrepreneur deal, Like I had my video team make Instagram story videos that went with the article. I had them make images that they could put on their Instagram feed. And so their publishers were like, this guy is the best guy in the world because we literally just need to copy and paste. You're just saving so much time, money. You're, You're just removing hurdles is all you're doing. You're taking it a step further. Yeah. And if you don't remove those hurdles, you're giving them a reason to say no. Mm. And I think when most people make the pitch to media, they're giving them a reason to say no. And I try to give them every single reason to say yes. And they would like be an idiot if they said no. Right. And do you get no's? Of course you do. Um, But, you know, the more that you can make it easy for them, the better. So now to the Amazon. Right. So that's like Mm. the so there's the next league of this. So like associations, things like that, entrepreneur, who are other media companies that have access? So everyone wants to get on Netflix. It's really hard to get on Netflix. Um, Mm -hmm. We've sold now, uh, my partner Nick sold one movie to Netflix, Mm -hmm. um, a documentary that we did called The Rebound. Uh, I'm not allowed to disclose what we got paid for it, but I can tell you it didn't pay for one tenth of the production of the actual film itself. Um, So everyone's like, Netflix is the holy grail. Yeah, it is if you're Dave Chappelle. Right. Yeah, and there's you know, no royalties like, or anything if you're like Jerry that. Right? There's no royalties. Yeah. Uh, and it's and it was a seven year exclusive deal, meaning we can't wow. put it anywhere else for seven years. And there's no royalties. Right. So mm-hmm. if they just put it in the bottom of their thing and never display it on that, like it's just in their inventory. And so, again, we get the street cred of saying, yes, we've got a movie on it. But like so we looked at, well, who else is out there that will give us a better deal? Mm-hmm. And Amazon. Almost everyone on the planet who I would want as a customer has Amazon Prime, right? Like yep. those are like the greatest people. And so Amazon Prime has a free video subscription program. If you're a Prime member called Amazon Prime Video, which has some great shows like Jack Ryan, uh, The Boys, and just some, some amazing content. Yeah. Marvelous uh, Miss Maisel, one of my favorite shows. That's right. Yeah, hey, yeah. you know, whatever works, man. It's quarantine <laughs> time. So, you know, we got to fill our time with something. And yeah. so, uh, so we looked at Amazon. What people don't know about Amazon uh, is that they have something called Amazon Video Direct. And that if you meet the criteria that they want for the show, they will guarantee distribution through Amazon Prime. Um, and this is something that I don't really share. So you guys are getting some good good nuggets right now. So there are some criteria, meaning you can't just take a selfie video and put it on Amazon Prime, right? So there are, there are criteria. You need to have a director. You need to have a producer. You need to have some things in line. You gotta have closed captioning. You gotta shoot both 16.9 and 4.3 because for some reason, like someone is somewhere out there accessing Amazon Prime TV on an old school square. Like, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> how but does that's that a, work? Like function, like, but, like so how do you take I, Amazon I, to I a figure, box? Yeah. I don't know. Like, you, that's like I feel like that's like a squiggle cable thing, not yeah. like an eight, like I, I have no idea. But yeah. regardless, you have to create your video in four three. You got to do closed captioning, uh, which is not the same as just transcribing your video. Right. And so right. there's like again, it's it's not like you need to like jump through a million hurdles, but they there is a barrier. And then there the final thing is they do have to approve the content. So like you know there it's not quite freedom of speech. You know Jeff Bezos rules. Um, right. But once you do that. You can, uh, and then they can structure based on your content. If they they approve you, you can either just get put into Amazon Prime and they pay you based on how many streams you get. So you actually right. make money by having your video on Amazon Prime. Wow. So you mm-hmm. can get, so if your video ends up getting millions of views on Amazon Prime, you get really, 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 really big checks, um, mm-hmm. which is which is amazing. You can also set it to where people like iTunes can pay for each episode. So, you know, just like you can rent a new movie when it comes out, like when the Avengers comes out, you, mm-hmm. you can't watch it on Prime for Free, you can rent it. You can say it's four ninety nine for a rental, nineteen ninety nine to buy for a TV show. You could do ninety nine cents an episode or ten dollars for the whole season. Um, mm-hmm. And so there's some really really cool things you can do. What we've seen is again, I want distribution. We make it free on Amazon Prime, uh, and if we hit if we strike gold, we get some good checks. If we don't, our shows are on Amazon Prime. So I know I went on a tirade there of a lot of different <laughs> stuff. So like, feel free interrupt. 
you know, tell me what I missed. Uh, so I don't so think I you missed there. much. What was the name of that again? It was Amazon Video Video Direct. Direct. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just have some 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 clarifying questions. And so feel free on... to not link to that because um, that's like a secret that you know. I don't want. <laughs> we'll leave it it's in like the notes. It's like how people, so people ruin like the ebook world where they uploaded four page PDFs and they called it a book and they ruined the publishing world. I don't want them to do that to video. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll censor that. <laughs> All right, Sue. Go so ahead. you're listening to this as you're writing the notes. Make sure you only put it in the companion that people pay for and not the. Okay. Uh, Free Ooh, notes like on that. the website. The public, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what were you going to ask? <laughs> yeah, so when it comes to like Amazon Video Direct, if you put it on there for free, do you get checks or yes. is that yeah so it's do? based on yeah so it's based on streams so mm, okay. uh, at that point uh you know if five people watch your video you're not going to get a check from them so uh ambitious adventures has been on there um, I, let's make two and a half years ish um we still get royalty yeah. yeah 2018 so yeah so two years plus uh we still get checks from them every single month wow. they have dwindled uh over the last couple months uh but you know during the first few months like we were getting a couple thousand dollars a month um oh, wow. off streams and now Sweet. that trickles into i don't know like 70 dollars a month now but still like you know it's free money Money. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's also a global access to us. Now, the cool thing about Amazon is it's also like a huge search engine, right? So oh, yeah. when you do your show right, so in our show, Ambitious Adventures, we had Jack Hanfield on the show, Kevin Harrington. We had Jake Paul, one of the top YouTubers on the planet. Very controversial, but huge name. Right, sure. Uh, we had Joel Com. We had uh, Caleb Maddox. We had um, Lewis House. Uh, Lewis House. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the cool thing is someone goes onto Amazon and searches for Lewis House. Mm. It, when you do your SEO and tags and all that for your episode descriptions, you can start showing up. And so mm -hmm. I, I mentioned the Rudy one earlier. So this one took off for us because people go into Amazon video and they start searching for Rudy and they see they got to pay to watch the actual movie Rudy, right? Like yep. the Hollywood blockbuster movie Rudy. And they see ours is free and they're like, eh. I'll yeah. watch that. I'll so like there is, yeah. yeah, so there's an SEO strategy there. And so Ru that's why I said earlier, Rudy's been our biggest commercial one because there was that built-in celebrity and built-in search. So if you know, like people are searching for certain movies or films or things on Amazon, there are ways to, I wouldn't say game the system, but to leverage the fact that it's a search platform and, yeah, and right. get some benefits from that. Sure. And, and so is Amazon also non-exclusive? Cause you did mention you could put them on yes. iTunes as well. So you can put them in both yes, places. Huge. So I think yeah. that was the other thing with, with Amazon is it is a non-exclusive rights. So meaning you could have it on Amazon, you could put it on YouTube, you can have it on, you know, your website, you can you know put it on Facebook, like all of that stuff. Uh, and I think that's really, really cool. Now, obviously at some point you got to figure out where you want to send your traffic. Right. Um, right. And so for us, what we decided is that it was always in our benefit to send people to Amazon because even if they didn't watch it, they know that now I have a TV show that's on Amazon, which, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it's true, like no one really has a show on Amazon, you no. know? And so to say, you know, that you have a TV show, you know, multiple episodes with these guests on Amazon, it just... The, the credibility bump is is insane. Right. Yeah. And that's the whole thing of, of uh, you know, you don't want to you don't want to just contain everything to one platform, but it sure as hell you want to use that to leverage for credibility. In your case, distribution is huge. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, there's there's I'm sure there's other ways you can just get the, that audience to move with you somewhere else if needed, if it, you know. Yeah, there's also nothing in the contract there that says that you can't have. And so this is something that looking back, like playing Monday morning quarterback that right. I would have done is I would have had like lower thirds that popped up that says like text hashtag ambitious Lewis to say your favorite line that Lewis just shared. I'm making this up, but like, yeah, right. or pop up and be like, you know, go to ambitiousadventures.com slash Lewis to get a breakdown of our 10 top tips for like, we should have embedded calls to action into the actual show. Mm. Um, that, you know, sometimes you're just creating a show and you forget about that. But I think that's a huge thing that I would have done is I would have embedded and I would have done it very, you know, I wouldn't have been like in your face, like, hey, if you're watching this video right now, there are 10 tips right now you need to get from Lewis. Like, you know, yeah. I would have probably put up a lower third. That's like, if you love this interview from Lewis, imagine getting the full three, like we interviewed Lewis, I think for six hours wow. and like nine minutes made it into the show, oh, right? Wow. And so, <laughs> um, so like, I would have loved to have been like, get the whole two hour edited interview with Lewis at, but you know, yeah, yeah, is what you is. win some, you lose some, That's but fine. yeah. And then, so with Amazon, you mentioned like if you have something on there, and I guess if it starts to get some traction, then Amazon sort of helps boost the traction more. So if you drive some traffic to it and get some eyeballs on it, then Amazon's more likely to feature it themselves, right? 
exactly. So it's just like, um, you know, Netflix, when Netflix like recommends, you know, like new other shows for you yep. to watch. Well, Amazon has the exact same feature. So, yep. you know, ours was like entrepreneur based. And so if someone was on Amazon, let's say watching Shark Tank or they were watching The Profit or something like yep. that, if enough people were watching our stuff and there were similarities in it, their recommendation engine would be like, hey, you might also like Ambitious Adventures or this or this or that. So again, the recommendation engine really starts to kick in. Um, once they know that, all right, there's organic traffic coming to this. People, you know, it's same thing as like a YouTube, right? I know you've had a lot of YouTube experts on is is, is uh, watch time is yep. really important. Well, mm -hmm. Amazon's the same thing. Like, wow, a lot of people are going to this. They're watching the whole episode. Then they're binge watching another episode. Then they're watching they're like, we need to get this to, to more people. So it's the same concept as like a YouTube uh, or, or a Netflix when the recommendation engine hits. I'm actually on the page now and it says, customers who have watched this item also watched <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I never it. said we had the it. smartest audience, but yeah. <laughs> like, well, maybe we do. Like. I mean, it's a great show, so you know. it is. I know. I'm not dogging and it the at Bachelor, all. you know, Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> well, so all right. So I want to go back to Entrepreneur.com because yeah. that was where it kind of kicked off. It sounds like for this specific show, Ambitious yeah. uh, Adventures, right? So, what was the whole take from from uh, you know Entrepreneur.com? How did that transition into Amazon? I mean, was it just like all right, more distribution? Was that yeah. with them or? So with Entrepreneur, what we did is we gave them 30 day exclusive rights. So meaning uh, at the time they would get the episode for 30 days after it had been on their site for 30 days, mm -hmm. we could then go and you know do whatever we wanted to do with it. So we went to them first um, and what it's not even we negotiated it, but we did some of the things I talked about earlier is when the episode came out, we were like, how can we leverage every single one of their channels to get the most attention and eyeballs? And I think that most people would be like, all right, we're going to give Entrepreneur the file. They're going to put it on their website right. and they're going to promote it because they're Entrepreneur. And we never thought that way. Like we wanted them to think that way and we hoped that they would, but we didn't like leave it to them to do it. And that's, this is not a, a knock on Entrepreneur. It's just that, you know, they post something like 50 articles a day. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we're one of 50 a day, which is like 350 a week, like we're nothing to them mm. um, unless we did something. So we looked at what are all the different distribution channels on Entrepreneur that we might at least ask. The worst they can say is no. So the first thing we did is the day the episode was gonna be launched on entrepreneur.com, we asked them if we could go live on their Facebook page. At the time, their Facebook page had about 3.5 million likes on the page. And mm -hmm. we said, you know, to again, incentivize it, we said, hey, what if we could get Lewis Howes live to introduce the episode, we'll do a live Q&A with Lewis, and then we'll play the episode live, and then when it ends, on the website, it would go live. And they were like, you could get Lewis? You could, like, you could, you could. And, and so we did that whole trick then. Then we went to Lewis and we said, hey, entrepreneur, want you to do this really cool thing live with a, you know. And yeah. so, uh, so we had Lewis live on Entrepreneur's Facebook channel where people were asking him questions and we got to talk to him about the filming and he said how awesome it was. And then we did the episode. So, you know, we ended up with, you know, 100, 200,000 views of the live before the episode even went live. Wow. Then, like I said earlier, we made the Instagram stories. Uh, and so what we did is each episode had about three to four guests. So we made a different Instagram story, like five to seven minute, like GIF style image for each guest. So there was one for Lewis Howes, one for Jack Canfield, one for my partner, Nick, one for uh, Carlo, who was in that episode. And then every day for the, you know, the five days the episode went out, we were getting Instagram story stuff. We created, it's mm -hmm. so like, so, uh, and then I wrote an email, right? And so that they they didn't end up using the whole email, but what they do is they send up like a weekly roundup kind of email. Yeah. Uh, and you know we were always in that weekly roundup because again we gave them all the material. So at the time I think it was like one or two million people on the email list. There was two three point five million people on on uh, Facebook. There was you know a million or two on Instagram. So we used their entire ecosystem. Yeah. Now that was this what, four or five different distribution points just from one company, media source. Yeah. And and that's what, again, people tend to forget. So even like going to the Financial Planning Association, you're like, well, they're not entrepreneur. Yeah, but if that's where your target market is, they have a magazine that goes to 30,000 financial advisors. They have a Facebook page. They have a blog. They have an email list. Use every piece of media at your disposal. Don't just think that like, oh, cool, they're going to put me on their website. Yeah, that's cool. But like leverage it to the max. That That's how you're going to get ultimate eyeballs on your stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and then take it a step further if you want. Go to somewhere like Amazon where it's just blow the hatch open, you know? <laughs> exactly. I think it's just clever, man. And I, I love the whole thing of, you know, you're bringing value to entrepreneur.com in this case and Lewis Howells. And, you know, I know someone like Lewis, high demand guy, he gets mm -hmm. approached a lot. And, you know, there's reason, like, he's going to say no to most opportunities because of just dis distribution. So if you're thinking... Yeah. 
and this goes to what Jay Abraham, uh, a quote by him is what solve other, uh, shoot. It's on, it's on your cover. And I've, I've, I've voiced this to Jay perfectly. And he was like, yes, that's it. And I forgot it now. It's basically like solve other, someone else's bigger problem is, uh, is, is basically a solution to your own problem. And so you're solving, you know, Lewis house wants more distribution. Cool. You just paired him up with entrepreneur.com entrepreneur.com probably wants Lewis house. Cause he's a hot rising brand. Uh, boom, mash them out together. You're just in the middle and you made it happen. Yeah. Um, and ha- this is somewhat controversial and I shared this at the mastermind as well, is that sometimes, and people don't like to hear this because they like to think that all people are great people and they do it for the, for the love of what they do. <laughs> sometimes you do have to pay to play mm-hmm. and sometimes mm-hmm. you do have to recognize what, what people want in order to get them to do what, what you want. Uh, and so, uh, in, in the case of a couple people that we worked with, you know, we knew that they had a book coming out. So we would say, Hey, you know, we'll buy 500 copies of your book if you'll do an interview for our show or we'll do, you know, uh, you know, Lewis, like we bought tickets to his event. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he wanted to sell seats to his summit of greatness. Like, I don't think that that makes him a bad person. I think that it, he has, look again, like you said, his time, super valuable. He's, you know, at the upper echelon of, of what he does. And so if you want to get his attention, like he was trying to sell tickets. So I'm like, Hey, we'll go in, we'll buy a bunch of tickets and we'll give them away as like a raffle, but he gets the revenue. He gets what he wants. And we got, you know, um, and you know, we've done this with all kinds of stuff. We shared uh, so great resource, uh, you know, charity buzz, Um, you know, you can find celebrities who will give, give up a lunch or maybe invite you to their gala or whatever it is. If you make a donation to their charity. And, you know, one of the biggest ones that we did was with Larry King. It was uh, $10,000 and we got to have breakfast with him. Hmm. Uh, and so my partner, Nick, flew from Orlando to Los Angeles to the spot that Larry King has breakfast at every single day before he goes to the studio, had breakfast with him. And there's a shot that nothing's going to happen other than having some eggs and bacon with, you know, Larry King. Sure. Um, luckily, Nick is a really good negotiator and salesperson. Uh, and we ended up doing a ton of stuff. We ended up doing a, a book publishing deal with him. And uh, we ended up doing a, a documentary on his life, which I think is also on Amazon. Wow. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but like so a 10,000, like, again, people don't like to hear that. They like to think that you know i just and does it happen like i cold emailed larry king and he said he's like does it happen of course it does but sometimes to accelerate things you do have to show people that you're in their league and it's not something that people genuinely want to hear no. um mm-hmm. but it's a way to buy speed to get you what you need in order to, to play that game yep. yeah and i mean with this podcast you know being fully transparent we've had people on the podcast where we're like hey can we donate to your favorite charity in order to get you on? And, and we've done stuff like that to get some of the names on our podcast. Um, you know, we, we we like to put out the perception that all of these people are our homies and we can just get them up on the phone anytime we want. But uh, <laughs> the reality is a lot of these people, we didn't know them before we got them on the podcast. <laughs> and uh, we we did things like that to grab their attention. So well, and the beauty there is true. that, yeah, you do that to get the door open. But once the door right. is open, they can mm-hmm. be homies. If you can homies. deliver. Right. Yeah, if you, you deliver, deliver the goods, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and by the way, the roulette retirement fund account number is, uh, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Oh man. I mean, there's, so one question about this whole, um, you know, Amazon talk and distribution working with a big company. So, uh, you mentioned, you know, a whole producing team director, all that stuff. And crowdfunding is something that you've done before for some of your projects. Can you talk about yeah. that a little bit? Because a lot of folks probably just thinking, well, I can't sure. afford to do this. Yeah, so I couldn't either um, because like, you know, we run a business and when I went to my business partners, I was like, hey, I want to go spend a ton of money to do my own reality show. They were like, you're you're nuts. Like, (laughs) great idea, Greg, but how are you going to fund it? And so I initially funded a pilot out of my own pocket, Um, you know, spent about $10,000 out of my own pocket to even just see if there was validity in the idea. Um, Ended up that it was the the crappiest like pilot of all time. It was like unwatchable. Um, It was it was really bad. Um, But then, you know, I sent it to a couple people and we we course corrected and uh, I met a guy. Uh, by the name of Brandon Adams, uh, who at the time was doing a lot of crowdfunding projects. His big one he did was the uh, the Freedom Journal, I think it was, for yeah. uh, John Lee Dumas. So yep. he did his whole Kickstarter campaign. And I was like, all right, well, this guy, he wants to be like a celebrity um, and he does crowdfunding. Well, what if I allow him to be a co-host of the show and he runs a crowdfunding campaign for me? And, uh, and so again, it was like, I knew what he wanted. He wanted to be on a TV show. I had one. I didn't have money to produce it. So, you know, we found a way to work together. And so we ran a Kickstarter campaign. Um, and again, I'm all about speed. Like how fast can we put things together? So we met, uh, I, I flew to Iowa, which is where he was from at the time to, to speak at his event. I wrote a check to be a sponsor so that I could speak at the event so that I can meet him. Hmm. Um, so, you know, uh, 
I asked him, hey, would you come down to Orlando and do a consulting day to see if we have validity to this project and see, you know, uh, that was a week after the event, he was in Orlando. Huh. Seven days later, our Kickstarter campaign was live. Jeez. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that fast. And so I think people too often are waiting. They're waiting for permission. They're waiting till the timing's right. Like the timing was not right. Like I had just had my second child. My wife needed me at home. Our business was going up and down. Like it, I should not have been focusing on a show, but if I didn't focus on it then, when would I? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd be 40. I'd be 45. I'd be 50. I'd be way past my prime. I would, you know, have a, you know, not be doing Ninja Warrior and I'd have an extra, you know, 40 pounds at the waist. Right. And so, <laughs> you know, no one wants to watch that on TV. So, <laughs> so speed of execution. Now, Kickstarter in and of itself, I do think is a great platform um, for certain things. What I didn't like, uh, well, so A, we ran a, a 30 day, 28 day campaign, four weeks. We raised mm -hmm. $52,000 in, in 28 days, nice. um, ranging from, you know, $1, you know, back us to all the way down to $10,000 to be uh, actually in the episodes. And we ended up selling three of those, which is how we got a lot of the money, which is where uh, in some of the different cities, we don't like to disclose that which ones, but mm -hmm. they paid to have a segment essentially in the show. So like, hey, Lewis Howes and me in the same episode. Um, and so that, that was really, really cool. Uh, and then we had a thousand dollar tier where they got to come to the premiere and we hosted an event and stuff. Um, and it was really, really cool. The downside of raising $52,000 on Kickstarter is that we had to give Kickstarter like $10,000, uh, $15,000 in fees um, for it. Then we had ad spend that we had that we drove people to the Kickstarter campaign. So I, and and uh, so when all was said and done, I think that we ended up with just shy of 30 of those $50,000. Gotcha. And it was costing us about $15,000 an episode. So we raised enough money to do two episodes essentially, mm. um, which again, that's great. It's awesome. It, it's an amazing way to, to kind of grow the business um, and get some funding. What I really see Kickstarter as is validity that you have an idea that people will actually pay for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And How would you do it differently now if, uh, if, if you were trying to raise some funds? Great question. I would do the exact same thing. I would just do it internally. Uh, and this is actually how we fund our documentaries now. Uh, so we just did one uh, called Dreamer uh, a few weeks ago uh, with uh, Giovanni uh, Marshuko. Uh, and we had some amazing people in there. Anush Asari, who was the mm -hmm. the, the uh, Ansari X Prize, which is the first X Prize. Um, mm -hmm. Just some amazing people in that. And so what we did is we went to our list. They went to their ma mailing list and said, hey, we're putting together a documentary. Do you want to be there for the interviews? Do you want to be named as an executive producer? Do you want to come to the premiere? Yada, yada. And uh, uh, you know, we say there's 10 producer spots, 10 executive producer spots. It's $10,000, $20,000, like whatever the pricing is. Uh, and we do internal crowdfunding. When you do that, all you do is pay the credit card fees. Mm -hmm. And so I would do it the exact same way. I just wouldn't do it publicly. I would do, I would do like a launch to say, Hey, we're getting ready to do season two of ambitious adventures. And we're looking for 10 people who want to come on this journey with us to be a part of it, to be an executive producer on the show, to have a segment, like whatever that it is. Uh, and I would just do it internally instead of on a platform like Kickstarter. Yeah, Again, it's not a knock at Kickstarter. Yeah. I just need every single dollar that I raise. I actually need it to, right. to, to fund the thing. So I'm just thinking like the way I'm just like, I just got an idea. I'm like, oh yeah, because we use Thrive Cart all the time for our payment process. I'm like, you can do a whole pay what you want thing right, right yep. there and like basically do a whole internal crowdfunding thing with a purpose. And yep. like, yeah, anyone can do that. And you never know what's and if you if you bribe ethically bribe them with something that they really want, you never know what's gonna happen with the list you're already sitting on or social media following that you already have. Yeah, you just rile them up, right? They, they yeah. uh, like we all want to be a part of something, right? Like mm -hmm. we're we're recording this. I'm dating this now for you guys. So you guys can hate right. me forever, but like <laughs> we're we're recording this in the middle of like the COVID thing. Like everyone yep. wants to either be a part of the conspiracy theory, or they want to be a part of the health side, or they want to be a Donald Trump fan, or a Donald mm -hmm. Trump. Like they all want to be a part of a of something, yep. right? They right. all want to identify something, and if you can create that in your marketing, like you know, you know, for this film we just did the Dreamer one, like. People wanted to be a part of this because they wanted to share the fact that you can dream something and it can become a reality. Like they wanted to be a part of that and attach their name to that so that they can share it with their their followers, to share it with their kids, to be a legacy play to like, mm. if you dream it, you can achieve it. Like they wanted to be a part of that movement and we've seen it with all kinds of movements, right? And oh, so, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, if you can build that fire inside of someone to say, I wanna be, a, like going back to the music industry, right? Like everyone wants to be in that inner circle of the band before they make it big. It's true. Like, yeah. oh, I knew, I 
I knew Metallica when they were just playing at 25 person dive bars in, in on Santa I Monica or you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I just want to I just want to show off the fact that my band was once called Fallout Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Achieved, Matt. You finally got your opportunity. We all we all want to be that person uh, that that supports them at that level to be a part of that movement, to be the right. original Swifty before Taylor Swift became what she was. Like, you know, right. and so if you can create that 100% like you can create your own internal crowdfunding thing and they want to people do genuinely want to help you. Um, Definitely, you man. know, and you just got to give them something that they can they can latch on to. I think that's again, going back to we it's the whole point of this whole episode really is just you have to provide enough value for them to want to do it. That's it. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's giving value and and just getting creative and solving that problem, your problem, mashing them together, beautiful things can happen and and distribution on a higher level that you can never <laughs> build yourself. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Building your own audience, man. Ugh, it's tough. It's tough, yeah. expensive and long. Yeah. And there's so a lot of shortcuts it, to it. Yeah. There are, yeah, this is a great one. So I think uh, we got about like let's 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 focus like the last 15 minutes or so on this new project of yours. You told us in the last 30 days you've completely revamped your business. Well, you've kind of had to. Yeah. Uh, and share as much as you want. I mean, obviously this is all new and fresh, but I would love to hear what you're doing, how people can, you know, check it out because I think it parlays perfectly into the video stuff we're chatting about here. Totally. So, yeah, I mean, our core business, you know, 60 days ago was getting people to jump on an airplane um, Mm -hmm. and fly down to Orlando to be in our studio. And, you know, whether that was to create their own online TV show, whether that was for, you know, video like high end video production, social media videos. We did a lot of like the Gary V content model where people would come in and we create 30, 60, 90 days worth of content in a day. Um, And literally, obviously, with the the world changing the way that it did uh, with, with a snap of a finger, a all of our all of our existing people who had book something in the month of March and April and May had canceled and asked for refunds and, uh, you know, ballpark six figures in refunds within, mm-hmm. you know, within two weeks. Uh, yeah. I don't care who you are. You get that. Like it, it, it messes with you. Mm-hmm. Um, all the, yep. <laughs> yeah. All the proposals, everything that we had out there that was, you know, incoming, um, gone, everybody that was on like a monthly retainer, you know, we're the, like you're spending two, three, four, five thousand $5,000 a month on content. And all of a sudden their business model gets rocked. Like we're the first person that, that, that got knocked. So, mm-hmm. Um, you know, we pretty much lost 80, 90% of our, our revenue within a two week period. And, and then you you like, and so I was, it was dark. Um, and I think my partner, Nick and I, so we have a couple different businesses, but on the ambitious side, uh, that I run, you know, I was like the guy who was like, I was at home and I was sick to my stomach like Mm -hmm. every day, like, what am I going to do? And what I want to tell everybody is that a, it's okay to be sad. It's okay mm-hmm. to let out your emotions. It's okay to not know what, you know, like it's okay, yeah. right? As, as entrepreneurs, like we always gotta be the alpha type and grind, like we're gonna, it's okay to like mourn, but then you gotta, then you gotta get, get your ass in gear. Yeah, and don't stay there. That, yeah. Right, don't stay there. And so, um, you know, I had, it was a Friday afternoon and I was just thinking about, all right, so what are we gonna do? Like, how are we gonna hit payroll? How are we gonna pay people? And I had this idea, uh, I started thinking about all the things that I'd done that had been successful in our, in our businesses and everything was related to speed. Right. So I, I mentioned the, the mm-hmm. Kickstarter flew mm-hmm. to Iowa a week later. He's in my office a week later. Kickstarter's up. Yeah. Uh, I remember mm-hmm. right before uh, my third son, Ashton, was born, uh, I was supposed to go speak in an event. And this is our our internal big annual event. And I get about a third of my revenue for the whole entire year at this event. And I wasn't going to be able to go because my son was going to be born during that event. Mm-hmm. And so I go, oh, crap, I'm about to lose a third of my revenue. What do I do? And I stayed up all night. I wrote an e- I wrote an, like an email campaign. I sent it out. I didn't have the whole program worked out. I invited two of my friends to the office the next morning and I started just booking strategy sessions on the fly and I built the offer on the whiteboard while talking to people. <laughs> and he was like, you you promised that guy four videos and you promised this guy three. Like, And I was like literally making packages up and it ended up being our best selling program for like 18 months, our virtual wow. video program because my back was against the wall and I needed to do something fast. So we, we started to see like everything that I had done had been from taking action and doing it in a, in a very, very fast way. And so that Friday afternoon, I said, I'm gonna teach people how to do that. I'm gonna teach people how to stop thinking about the things that they want from life and actually use this time that they have now to do it. And so that was Friday. Saturday, uh, I had my wife film the sales video. Um, and so just, again, a fun media thing. So I've been watching a lot of uh, Jimmy Fallon at home. Yep, um, it's like yeah. amazing, dude. It's amazing, it. right? Yeah. So his wife is the camera person, yep. right? And his kids do all the graphics. Yeah. So yep. I'm yep. not smarter than Jimmy Fallon. So my kids made all the graphics. So it was a five module course. So they drew out, like module one was about content, module two, and my wife 
wife was the camera person and I had my wife film it and I held up graphics that my kids made uh, and I filmed that on Saturday, built the funnel on Sunday, started selling it on Monday, sold it out by Friday and did delivered the course live on Friday, <laughs> saved my business. Wow. Right from a Friday to a Friday. Um, and then uh, because of the amazing friends that I have in this industry, guys like Todd Brown, Rich Sheffrin, just jumping on the phone with them, jumping on Zoom, and they helped me build an entire new, you know, and obviously my business partners, Nick and Jack, mm -hmm. we all got together and we built an entire new business that didn't exist 30 days ago from today, we're recording this. Um, and now uh, we're on track for a six figure month uh, this month, um, you know, from front end, back end sales. We've hired two salespeople, like, <laughs> like it's growing like weeds yeah. because we didn't wait. And I think every everybody who's listening to this, I know you had amazing guys like Rob Cosberg on a couple weeks ago about yep. book stuff. I know you guys talk about podcast. Like everybody wants to write a book. Everybody wants mm -hmm. to write a podcast. But I jump on the phone with them and then I jump on the phone with them six months later. I'm like, how's that podcast coming? They're like, still thinking about a cool name. Yeah. I'm like, bro, six months went by. You do four, you should be 24 episodes in, right? Easily. And so, yeah. yeah, and so just getting people to think about speed of execution um, and and I, uh, Mark Ford, who was at the, the mastermind yep. you guys were at, Michael mm -hmm. Masterson, Amazing book, ready, fire, aim. And that's the mm -hmm. philosophy that we teach in Velocity. It's most people screw up when they get into the aiming phase. They go to an event, they listen to a podcast like they're listening to right now, they're jacked up. That great guy was cool, I wanna go do this. And then they aim forever. Well, what's the name of the show? What should I like? The problem with aiming is it's subjective. You could go a little more to the left, you could go a little more to the right, a little more down, a little more up. You could, and all of a sudden you never fire. Right, I'm yeah. the kind of guy who I get ready, I fire, and I usually screw like 99 things out of 100 up, right? Like the tech doesn't work, they bought and they didn't get the right land. Like, yep. but guess what? I got real customer data and feedback. I got real customers who gave me money. I validated it. And now I can aim and fix all that stuff because yeah. everything else is fix fixable. And people are forgivable never, as well. That's the thing. Dude, people people dude, think people, that they're gonna, you're gonna be hated. Uh, you're like, no. <laughs> Sometimes you do get haters, but Sometimes. like, um, but but the majority of people they totally get it, and I'm just like, hey man, we launched this yesterday. I'm still figuring out the tech, but I, I think the other thing that I'm willing to do is like, I'll call somebody. Hey Joe, just saw that you ordered. We're working on the membership site as fast as we can. Give me like an hour, and I'll mm. I'll, I'll I'll shoot you the you know, and just that customer service. But you know, it's that idea of like people are just they're waiting for the perfect like this COVID thing. Like if you didn't have a job, like maybe you got furloughed or lot and you got all this, like, even if you are working, now you're not in the car an hour a day. Right. What could you be doing with that hour a day? And this isn't, I'm not one of those people who say you should hustle your face off, work 24, like that is not me. I have kids, I know you guys, you know, family mm -hmm. people, like I wanna spend as much as time as I can with my family, but during the hours that I'm sitting in front of the computer or a microphone or a camera, I'm gonna make it count and I'm mm -hmm. gonna help as many people as I can today. And so, but anyway, long story short, we built this whole business around this concept of velocity. So the program's called Velocity, as uh, we have a Velocity business program Program, a 12 week program to give people the skill sets that they need to just launch things at warp speed, very Star Trek -y, wow. uh, you know, uh, kind of thing. And, uh, and dude, it's, it's literally changed my life. But I think more importantly, I think the reason why it's working is because people are going through the program and they're going, you know, I went through this, Greg, on a Friday and on Saturday, I launched my podcast. Wow. I went through this on a Friday and I wrote my children's book, you know, uh, you know, over the weekend. And now it's, I'm publishing on Amazon. Like it's giving them permission to do it now. Um, yeah, yeah. you know, imperfect action. And it, anyway, it's just, I'm excited, man. It's, it's really I think cool. that's great. I mean, you're, I, I know Chris Kremitzos, you know, PodFest owner, uh, one of the creators wrote a book, Start Ugly, same exact kind of idea. Um, yeah. obviously you're, you have an action plan, but that it's the concept of so many people stay over here or they, uh, it's not, it's not perfect action. You know, uh, they're either stuck in perfection or they're just stuck in the thinking phase of not doing and it's like, okay, just just break out of that. And uh, it's, it's just interesting because that's that's where the best things happen with pivoting. Or yeah. we focus on the wrong things, right? Mm -hmm. So in business, you know, I learned this from Todd Brown, from Rich Sheffrin, two of my biggest mentors. And it's just like, and, and Dan Kennedy, the other one is like, the purpose of a business is to make money and help people, right? Yeah. right? And I think most people do not do revenue generating activities. Mm -hmm. Right. Like they go through their entire day and they're like, oh, I did like 9000 things today. And I'm like, well, which one of those helped you to get a client or to get mm -hmm. a customer? And they're like, none. And I'm like, well, how, you know, coaches are the worst, like life coaches, <laughs> business coaches. I'm like, if I want to hire you to coach me, how can I do that? They're like, well, you got to go on a strategy journey with me. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, like, like literally, can I give you $500 a month and you'll jump on the phone with me once a month to coach me? That's yeah. an offer. Let's yeah. launch that offer today. Keep and, it easy. and they're like, yeah. <laughs> mind is blown because they focus on all the wrong things that don't. And again, I think it's because they replace 
doing those activities with actually growing a business. And that's right. not what a business is. And so, yeah, Velocity helps to give them this, the skill sets that actually generate revenue at the end of the day. Like, because that's the only thing that matters, right? Yep. Like, you know, I, again, I love people that create a podcast and they want to help people and they want to change the world. That's awesome. But how are you going to fund all of that? Mm -hmm. Like you need to generate a customer. Yeah. No, I think it's it's fabulous and it's timely. I think you're going to help a lot of folks, you know, who are out of work right now or just some business owner that's just stuck in this whole pivot phase because they could experience exactly what we know a lot of people and agency owners and all that stuff where customers just dried up. Like you said, there's a reason why their business dried up. So then the clients, you know, that are the people with their clients in those spaces, good luck. But uh, yeah, there's a way out. So what's um? I know you have a little planner thing. You were giving it out, uh, I believe, at the mastermind. But uh, is that part of this whole thing or something we could offer here? Yeah. So still, the the best place for people to you know enter into my world because of what I do and my background is the video side. And so we have an, a a really cool tool, dude. It is so simple. Like this thing is not rocket science. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes people are amazed that like that's all it is. And I'm like. Yeah, use it like four times and just tell me that it's all it is. And uh, it's a video planner. And what we've done is uh, we there's there's 52 ideas. They're just like questions or prompts. And then there's 52 like blank pages with a really simple outline, a big idea, uh, an intro or opening hook to your video, three bullet points and a call to action. And that's the same strategy I was using back when I was selling courses to musicians way back then. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same strategy that I use now. And, uh, you know, it's the again to speed. It's the fastest way that you get this planner. Uh, we give it to people both digitally so they can start using it immediately and we send one physically to them in the mail and that same day like the best emails I get or Greg I just downloaded this I just put my first video on Facebook 20 minutes later I bought yeah. your thing 20 minutes later there's a video online and I'm like you win like yeah. <laughs> you are you are going to win at life um and uh and it's, it's it's really really cool and that's like still the front end because if I can get people to do that sure well then I can get them to do a call to action then I can get them to figure out all like so for me it's just like if you can take action even in a small way just creating that first video putting it putting yourself out there in a vulnerable position I, I can teach you anything and so that's still the starting point of our entire business is getting you to take that action because if you won't even do that there's no way you're going to build a funnel and like the, all no. the like crazy. It's like there's no if you won't even put point a camera at your face for 45 seconds, you're not going to do the rest that, that, that no it takes to actually grow a business. Yeah, you need that momentum. And this is kickstarting that momentum. I saw a lot of exactly. people in our mastermind when they saw this and flipped through it. And, a lot, you know, a couple of them have become partners or clients of yours now just from that interaction and talks like this. I think this one even was longer. I don't think it was an hour or so. But um, yeah, that planner, I know, lit him up. Yeah, and we've I, I keep getting people from our mastermind talking about you and a couple of other folks, but I hear your name often. So I'm like, okay, this is this is just kind of a no brainer to have you on the show, but also the planner. <laughs> so what's the what's the link? Uh, I believe we what the ambitious dot com slash hustle is what we said, I think. That is what we said. That's yeah, the okay. ambitious dot com forward slash hustle. Um cool. yeah, and we put something together uh, special for you guys just for uh, for listening to the show today. So right yeah. on. Appreciate it. Very that, cool. Man. Uh, do you have any books that you tend to recommend to people or you, you know, refer back to often yourself? I mean, it could be in, in yeah. your case, it could be documentaries, too, because those are always fun. Uh, fun. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a I'm a marketing nerd. I, I think the, the 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 marketing book that changed everything for for me when I read it and I grasped the concept of it was it's actually a Dan Kennedy book and it's a uh, no BS marketing to the affluent. Mm, and yeah. what that. what I learned from that was that it takes just as much effort to sell to somebody who's broke as it does to sell to somebody who is affluent, um, mm -hmm. you know, who has the means, right? And and it's going from, all right, I'm, you know, my story, right? $27 courses for musicians to $2,700 programs now to a couple hundred thousand dollar programs if they wanna go to the documentary side. It was just changing that mindset of, of the who. Who are we gonna sell to? And that book, Dan lays it out perfectly, uh, talks about the difference between, you know, the salesman who shows up with like their eight PowerPoint slides and you know you're gonna get pitched some life insurance mm -hmm. versus like the guy who prescribes something and they just bring out like a napkin and they like map out your whole plan. Now he probably maps out the same napkin plan to everybody he talks to, sure. but yeah. because uh -huh. he does it on the napkin, like, oh, this guy is, the, he, he's prescribing something specific to me. It's just like right. those mindset, amazing book that I recommend to everybody. It's like 14 bucks on Amazon or something. It's, it's, it's really, really good money spent. I want to get that yeah. again. It's been, or it's somewhere around. I haven't read that. I've in got years. it. One of my shelves over here, you can't see it on the <laughs> camera. Well, like this shelf right here, on my the pen is pointed yeah. to yeah. that one is like half that shelf is just Dan Kennedy books. Like I, I oh, pretty yeah, much buy awesome. everything. Although I don't think Kill Dan it. writes any of his books anymore. I think most of the time they're just ghost written by other people, but for well, regardless, uh, yeah, regardless, they're all great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Awesome, Greg. I mean, uh, anything else before we sign off here, man? Because I think <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. We covered so much ground, and I think there's a lot of ahas here. But yeah, I'll I'll leave with this because I think it's something that you guys are really really good at too, and it's that um having access to people's mailboxes is very very underrated, and mm-hmm. you know. I would I would save a lot of money and make a whole lot more money if I didn't print my video planners and send them out to people that's because true. the majority of people just print out the PDF and that's good enough for them. Mm-hmm. But there's something about getting into people's mailboxes with the video planner, like you guys with the newsletter, like mm-hmm. like I'm like a kid at a candy store. I know what's in it. I listen to all the freaking episodes, right? But there's just <laughs> something about Joe and Matt coming into my mailbox. There's something about when I send the planner out into the mailbox. There's something about, you know, Dan Kennedy, like getting his newsletter. Like yeah. there's just something really, really powerful in that. And that's beyond the marketing capabilities, putting in inserts and ride alongs and mm-hmm. product samples or affiliate or like, there's just some different connection that you have. And so I don't want that to be lost on people and, and why we send the physical version out. Again, it would save me a metric ton of money by not having to mail out like right now, like and just in the last 30 days, we've done 4,000 of these things like, wow. you know, it, you know, so I mean, the cost is like I like, oh, cry every time I see the, the, <laughs> the statement from the fulfillment company. But now that's 4,000 people's homes that I get to go into. And they have me now, like like you said, you have Dan Kennedy right on your shelf. Yeah, Every yeah. single day you walk by that shelf, even if it's subconsciously, you see Dan Kennedy mm, because yeah. he's there all the time. Now I'm on everyone's desk every single day for the like well, for as long as they keep this there. And it is so powerful. So I know it's a weird kind of tangent, but I know you guys do a great job of that with the newsletter yeah. uh, and the things that you do. And I know you guys have a book that you send, you know, send out to people too, but like, mm-hmm. it is so cool to have physical, to like take up space in someone's life on their yep. desk, yeah. on their bookshelf, in their mailbox, that it transcends the relationship you have with them. Yeah. I mean, just another little quick anecdote on that is we actually, um, because of the whole COVID thing that's going on right now, we, we've had some issues shipping to certain countries, right? Some countries have stopped allowing mail in from USPS just to sort of be on total lockdown. And we had to inform some of these customers, hey, you're not gonna get a print version this month. We're gonna have to send you a digital version because we literally cannot get it to you. And they, the, the, the people that we mailed about that They flat out said, well, when mail starts working again, can you send me the print version? Because I'm collecting every issue. It's so cool. Yeah, (laughs) it's 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 wild, man. And I I know Dan Kennedy's talk about it all the time. It's like as soon as you go to like a digital version only of that, you know, the Evergreen Profits letter, you will get drop offs Mm -hmm. because people wanted like, you know, and I get it. It would save you guys a ton of money. Right. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, but but it is so worth it. So, yeah, Yeah. just a little little antidote for everybody listening. I love it. I love it, man. Well, yeah. Well, so the ambitious planner.com slash hustle. Go get it. I know I'm going to go grab that because uh, I think we gave all the physical ones out to the people at the mastermind. We ran out. <laughs> I, I got one. Oh, bastard. Winning. I managed to keep one. <laughs> <laughs> Winning. Uh, yeah. So go check that out. Greg, this has been awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is a lot of fun. Thanks so much for tuning into that episode. I hope you dug it. I know Joe and I dug it. I actually kicked Joe out of the room. He's not here right now because I wanted to tell you about a tool that I really, really dig. We use it in our business. We recommend it all the time. It's called Easy Webinar, and it's a tool that lets you do live webinars, automated webinars, hybrid webinars, and uh, you know pretty much any other kind of webinar if there are other kinds of webinars. But anyway, this tool is kind of like your all-in-one do-it-all tool for anything webinar related. It's Easy Webinar. It's put out by a dude named Casey Zeman. He's been on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, it's a killer episode. He's a really smart dude, but his software is amazing. It does everything. It's, you know, the title tells you exactly what it does. It's an easy webinar platform. And we use this in our business to run automated webinars all the time. We don't do a lot of live webinars these days. We like to do the kind of automated webinars where somebody can register and then it, you know, they can either watch it like 15 minutes later or they can watch it the next day, but it's just kind of always running. And it's a system that helps us make autopilot sales off of our webinars. Super cool tool. If you haven't tried it yet, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing tool. And, uh, Casey is actually hooking you up. He said for listeners of Hustle and Flowchart, I can't believe he's doing this, but he said for, for listeners of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast, he's giving 25% off of the membership to use Easy Webinar. It's already super, super inexpensive for what it does and all the cool features it has, but he's hooking you up with 25% off because you're a listener of Hustle and Flowchart. Go to easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's where you can get that 25% off discount. That's easywebinar.com slash hustle. It's an awesome tool. You're going to dig it. So just go grab it. Check it out. Easywebinar.com slash hustle. 
see ya. No, not see ya. You'll hear me in the next show. I don't know. I don't know how to close these things. Go get easy webinar. Talk to you later. Do you want to learn the hard skills necessary to support your favorite shows? Well, cool. Our friends Gina, Haley, and Mel created something called Podcast Production School. Now, it's an online course designed to help you master the skills and strategies needed to launch, manage, and grow podcasts, including things like audio editing, show notes, creation, and promotions. So download their free podcast production or their launch checklist today at podcastproductionschool.com slash go slash flowchart. Again, that's podcastproductionschool.com slash go slash flowchart. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. Before taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com, find this episode that you just listened to, and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening.